And Vinny, all right. What I did have... you think of of uh, Brian Danielson and Shingo? It was I, I. What did I give it? I think about four and a quarter, perhaps four and a half. Um, it was really super awesome. It was by the outrageously high standards of Brian Danielson matches. It was nothing special for about two thirds of the way through. Now I say that your average Brian Danielson matches in the four star range. So I, I I see that this is I've seen Brian Danielson have better matches than this, significantly better than this for the first two thirds, and then there's a point where Shingo is countering a hold, and he somehow ended up on the middle rope with Danielson on his shoulders, and he hit a twisting Samoan drop from up there. And then from that point on, it is about as good as pro wrestling could possibly be. They were super intense. They were uh, all their moves were executed perfectly. Their timing was great. The their nothing was even close to being botched. Everything was sold well. It also had the most heat I've ever seen for a Dragon Gate USA match because Ryan Danson was beloved. This was of course after he had been turfed for choking a ring announcer with a tie. The crowd thought they would never get to see him in person again, at least not in an environment like this where he got to be Brian Danielson, and they were thrilled to have one more chance to see him. Shingo came out first. The fans were chaining Dragon during his entrance. That's no good. Dragon came out. They went apeshit. They chanted everything. They chanted his name, chanted best in the world, chanted you're going to get your fucking head kicked in. And this, for like the first time in any Dragon Gate match I've seen, there was a baby face and there was a heel. This crowd did not want to see Shingo win. They wanted to see Brian Danielson have a great... Well, they wanted to see him have a great match, but they wanted to see him come out on top in the end. And even towards the end where Shingo was getting near falls off like a lariat of death and whatever you call his wacky pump handle pile driver, the crowd counted along like they believed it was going to be the finish, and then when Danielson kicked out, they went batty over and over again. It was fantastic. And eventually, Danielson had gone for cattle mutilation, all his old spots. Cattle mutilation, the super back suplex, the uh, MMA elbows. None of these had put Shingo away until finally he put on a label lock of complete death. This looked tight and uncomfortable, and Shingo was forced to tap out. And uh, it was fantastic. Crowd chanted match of the year, best in the world. I, I, I don't think... You know, I- let me say something about Brian Danielson. He probably really is the best in the world right now. I... I don't know. I, I just... Brian Danielson's matches remind me of back when I used to watch all of the great Noah matches, the early part of of the 2000s, and some of the All Japan stuff as well, where you'd have like Misawa and Kobashi, and these guys would go in there and, you know, obviously I was not watching these matches live. I was not even watching these matches like a week later. This was back in the day where you had to wait like a month to see some of this stuff, or, or at least I waited a month to see some of this stuff. But first you would get a report. So and Kabashi have five-star match. All right, well, that sounds great. So eventually the match would arrive, and this happened time after time. I would put in the DVD, I would start watching the match, and for like 15 minutes, you would sit there and you would go, this is a very good match, but what match was Dave watching? What match was anybody watching where they called this a five-star match? This is a very good, solid Japanese match. And then 10 minutes later, I am starting the match over again to watch it a second (laughs) time because it was so fucking unbelievably awesome. And I had that exact thought during this match. About 15 minutes into the match, I thought, this is a good match, but it's certainly not one of the best matches I've seen of this year. You know, maybe it'll maybe it'll pick up here at the end, but, uh, you know, Brian Danielson's been working a long time. He was in WWE for a while. Sure, he's got a lot of injuries. He's talked about it before. Body all banged up. You know, maybe he's uh, toning it down a little bit to, uh, to save himself. And then, 10 minutes later, I'm sitting there thinking, that was the best Dragon Gate USA match I have ever seen. And one of the best matches I have seen in all of 2010. And and granted, I have seen a few matches this year that have been out of this world. So anyway, suffice to say, there's no one in the world right now, I don't think, that can build matches the way that Brian Danielson does. And uh, he's just outstanding. What more is there to say? He's awesome. He's good at wrestling. 
He's a good professional grappler. He is very good. So there was. He needs uh, to tighten up his triangles, though. He, it's true. His, his, <laughs> he's that a great there. professional wrestler. His jujitsu apparently needs work. His oh. triangles. His tri- well, he, he you tapped t- the shit out of you. Uh, he's better than me, but he's apparently not better than Shingo because Shingo kept escaping. Yeah. That's my point. So then there was uh, some stuff with Yamato and BB Hulk. And uh, <laughs> Danielson joined BB Hulk in, I, I believe. Notice I didn't say he tapped the shit out of me. Do you think he would? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just want to throw that out there, though. <laughs> 